the doctor. That's joy, joy, joy. When you're in trouble, he's a lawyer. That's joy, joy, joy. Whatever the problem, he will solve them. Everything in Christ is joy. When you're sick, he's a doctor. That's joy, joy, joy. When you're in trouble, he's a lawyer. That's joy, joy, joy. Whatever the problem, he will solve them. Everything in Christ is joy. Everything in Christ is, is joy. Amen. Certainly everything in Christ Jesus is joy because he is good and he's good all the time. Again, welcome to our second part of our broadcast. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? And that is the same question that we ask the world. We ask each other. And everybody wants to be made whole. Everybody wants to be made whole. And sometimes we're, um, we're not being honest. We don't always be honest at our own feelings and our emotions. We just put a smile on our face and we just keep on walking and keep on ticking, taking a licking. But usually there's things that we go through, there's situations that we go through. And sometimes we don't tell people, we don't tell everybody what we're feeling. Sometimes we want to keep it to ourselves uh, because sometimes we don't want to bother other individuals. We don't want to bother people. Or sometimes we just don't, we just want people to just think that we got it all put together. But that's not the case because there's nobody, not nobody that got it all together. We all, um, we all go through, we all go through our situations, our dysfunctionalisms, or we, we're, all, we're all dysfunctional in some kind of manner, some kind of form. And some of us, is dis, we're dysfunctional in an in a, in a educated way, and some of us, is, we're dysfunctional in a quiet way, in a, uh, with some other people, we're, we're dysfunctional in, uh, in a busy type way. We're always busy, and, and the only thing that can be seen is our work that we're doing, so that, don't, that keeps us from uh, looking dysfunctional and being educated. Our words, you know, that we're speaking, it keeps us from looking and uh, dysfunctional. So we have a way, uh, believe it or not, to cover it up. You know, some of us, the way we dress, because we dress very elegantly, we dress very nice. And, and that just covers up being dysfunctional because the way we dress, it just overshadows the way uh, our dysfunctionalism is on the inside. But believe it or not, we all, all of us, the whole human race, Every single one of us, black, white, green, purple, orange, pink, yellow, whatever, polka dot, we all are dysfunctional in some form, in some fashion. And we all need help. We all need help from Yahweh, Jesus, the Christ. That's what we were created for. We were created to be his trophies, to be his trophies and to 
to lift him up, to worship him as our father, which are in heaven. And so when we're honest with ourselves, we come to that point of saying, hey, there is something wrong. There's something wrong that I am going through and I need help. And the best thing is to do is to really be honest, because when we're honest, things can get done quicker and faster, especially being honest with ourselves. When we're honest with ourselves, life has a way to get better quicker rather than having to go along, around in circles like the Israelites went 40 years. You know, there's someone, I think someone said once that what could have actually took the Israelites eight days coming out of Egypt into the promised land, eight days, it actually took them 40 years. 40 long years. Can you imagine, can you put eight days up against 40 years? Unbelievable, unbelievable. It could have just took them eight days to do what they had to do to get from point A to point B. But because of their, the way that they were, their attitude toward one another, their attitude most of all toward God, it took them 40 years. A long time. So we can, lay, we can waste a lot of time if we refuse to address what really needs to address. And because life is so quick, life is just so quick, we come, we're here today, and we're gone tomorrow. We shouldn't waste any more time. And I think the Bible talks about redeeming the time. And I know a lot of us, we wasted a lot of time in life. We wasted so much time now that we look back and how we could have done it different, how we could have done it different. But the thing is not so much doing it different, knowing how we could have diff did it different. The thing is now how we're going to do it different now today, how we're going to address everyday life different, but better to get more out of every day to get more out of life, to treat people right, to be honest with people, to be transparent with ourselves, to have a relationship with God, and then have a relationship with people. Sometimes we have a relationship with people, but don't have a relationship with God. And our relationship with people is all jacked up because we don't have a relationship with God. And see, that's the key. Have a relationship with our father teaches us to have a relationship with other people, teaches us how to talk, when to talk, when not to talk, how to talk and, and so forth and so on. That is the most important thing. When we have a relationship with God, we could then begin to have a relationship with other people. And then two males can then too have a relationship with a female. And then two, in turn, a female can have a relationship with a male. But first, before the two can coagulate, if you can look in the book of Genesis, the Bible says Adam first had a relationship with God. God first created Adam. And out of Adam, when he came first, God began to talk to Adam and Adam began to talk to God. They began to be one together. And then I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, but God noticed that God and Adam was coagulating together. It, and then God said, it's good for man not to be alone. And he brought on a wife. See, because Adam then came out of God, he came out of God. And because he came out of God, he was sufficient enough for one man. And then what the Bible says, he took, he made Adam to go into a deep sleep. And as he made Adam go into that deep sleep, he took the rib out of Adam and out of the rib of Adam, he brought forth Eve. And so Eve also was a part of God because Adam was a part of God as well. So all of them, too, were able to then coagulate together, be together. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that the three of them met in the coolness of the day in the evening. 
they had fellowship together, all three of them. First fellowship God had with Adam, and then Adam, then uh, God took rib out of Adam, put it in Eve, and then the three of them all came together. And that's one of the reasons why in our society today, there's a lot of problems and issues with relationship, with relationships. We find people getting married on a Monday and divorced on a Wednesday and uh, having relationship, guys having diff different girlfriends and different uh, whatever, and women having uh, a different girl, just get relationship. Just relationships just out of whack right now. If we want to know how it originates, how it is established, how to begin, we have to go to the blueprint. And the blueprint is the one that manufactured, the one who established relationships, the one who set it up, who fixed it, who, who's, who's the one that's, that can show us how to have relationship. Because sometimes our parents, your parents, my parents, we sometimes they did not show us the correct way. Some parents did, but some parents may have had a dilapidated relationship. And we saw that dilapidated relationship and we mimicked it. And we fell into the same hole they fell into. Some, we didn't see our fathers. Fathers wasn't there. We just had a mother and the mother was a single parent. And things began to just even go beyond, just worse. So what we're just trying to say, is that we got to understand that if you want to have a relationship, the relationship first has to be established with God. If we sometimes wonder, why do I keep falling? Why do I keep sinking? How come, is my hair long enough? Is my nails long enough? Do I, do, is, is, do I need to buy a short, do I need to lose weight? Do I need to get my, get my hair done? Or do I need to get a new suit? Do I need to buy a new Jaguar? Do I need to, nope, you don't need none of that. That's just external. That's just outer. First, you got to get the inner. See, we sometimes forget about what's the most important part. That's what Jesus had told the Pharisees. He told the Pharisees that you clean the outside of the cup, but on the inside, I'm going to paraphrase it, but on the inside, you ain't doing so well. And so sometimes we can worry about the outside and we can look all dandy and silky and impress people and people are, oh man. But on the inside, we don't do so well. We're not doing so well. See, in order for you to help somebody, you gotta be able to help yourself. In order to be able to make people happy or make people uh, what they ought to be, we need to make ourselves what we ought to be. And it starts within. Everything that we do, everywhere we go, it starts from within you. And Christ is in you. The hope of glory, if he is in you, you let him in you, then he will, the Bible says, spring out like a, like a river of living water. He says that I am the water, I am the vine, I am the living water. And because I'm the living water, that you are thirst no more. And so that's the, that's the key. See, you know, society, it seems like society have us looking and running after everything but the right thing. Can I say that again? Sometimes it, it just seems like society have you and I have us, they have us tricked, bamboozled, running after the bling blings, running after the cars, running after the houses, running after the money, running after the six figures, uh, uh, just running after those things. But, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with running. It, there's nothing wrong with going after those things, getting those things. But there's a big but. See, sometimes we we, we got to get it mis. We have to get it the right way. The right way is that if uh, we need to make sure that we're ready for those things, because a lot of times we can get things and we find down the road we're not ready for those things anyways. We don't want to make a blessing what appeared to be a blessing later on to be a curse. And so that's why we got to take time and with relationship, take time to let life, let God develop us, 
develop us. You know, there's a lot of, just like kids, children, teenagers need to be developed. You know, grown-ups, adults need to be developed too, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Just because we're, just because we are adults don't mean that we're sound, that we're developed. We can still have to be developed from within. And a lot of times when those areas of life um, show that we are not developed or we need things, then we need to go back to the manufacturer. When your car isn't running right, you got to go back to the manufacturer. You got to go back to the book and see what's in the book that can show you how to get your car fixed. Well, the same thing with you and I. When we see that we're not running right, when things aren't well, we need to go back to the manufacturer and to look in the book and to see what's, how to begin to r make those things that's not running well to run well again. We sometimes can go to everybody else and ask them for their opinion, what they think, what they see, what seems, you know, just ask them, all these other questions, what do you think, how do you think, and let people make decisions for our own life when we don't go to the manufacturer and ask the manufacturer, hey, what do you think? You're the one that made me. You're the one, that's, you're the one that brought me up from the dust. The Bible says it was out of the dust, out of the dirt, from the ground that God took man and he breathed and gave man. And he breathed and gave man life. And he put man together piece by piece, limb by limb. And if God did that, and because God did that, don't you think he has an answer for your whole life? Every bit, every bit of your life? See, the thing is, sometimes we are not, we, we don't take time enough to ask God what he thinks, what he, it, because we're so much in a hurry sometimes to want a fast answer. And sometime in life, there's no fast answer. Sometimes God is not going to just give you what you want, what you're asking for. Why? And you may say, well, I, I ask God sometime. I talk to God and he, it seems like he just don't talk back to me. Well, I sometimes sometime God feels as though that we will try to make him to be like a sugar daddy. A sugar daddy is just you just go to a sugar daddy and get what you want and then you leave. See, so the question is, when you go to God, are you asking God for something for your life based on you getting it and then leaving or based on you getting it and then you still hanging around? And that's the thing. Why? Because God wants to have relationship with you. Relationship is key. Character is so important in your life. Someone once said your gift will get you where you need to go to, but your character is going to keep you to where you're going to stay to. That's so important. And it's God that will build your character up. He'll build your attitude up. He will build your manners and your respect and uh, everything that needs to be given to you. God will give it to you from that relationship. He'll teach you when you're eating Chinese food and with shrimp, uh, shrimp, uh, shrimp fried rice, not to eat all the shrimp out of the rice, but save some for the next person. That's character right there. So what God does with all of us, he begins to develop the areas in our life that have not been developed. He knows every area. You think, um, you think an x-ray has really good um, uh, um, technology when it shows us uh, ultrasounds, when, when a woman is pregnant, it, it shows us the, the x-rays of, of the baby that is alive and all that. God's x-rays is far even, it, it's far advanced than the mind can ever imagine. His tech, he will go deep down inside of you and show you, hey, what's not developed and teach you how to develop it. 
You, uh, you, they say technology today is beginning to be so advanced. God's technology can never be topped. And I'm in a studio right now where you got so much technology, but God's technology is so far advanced that the mind cannot even perceive it to be. Because one of the things the Bible says that God works all things together for the good of those who love the Lord and is called according to his purpose. God works things out and guess simultaneously. He works things out in China and Bangladesh and Thailand and in and, and, uh, Morocco. And he I mean, the, I mean, the boy is bad. He is super bad. He can't nobody come close to God. Nobody, nobody. No, but not even Michael Jordan comes close to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Sometimes people don't get a chance to know him because you don't take time to get to know him. Taking time means that I'm going to take time and train my body, develop my body to begin to come to the point of hearing and learning to listen. Well, how do I hear? How do I listen? Well, the scriptures, the Bible, the manual that we talked about in the first class, it talks about it. It gives us instructions. How can I a hey, how can I get the worth of of an how can I get the worth of a thing if I don't read the instructions. I don't study the instructions. The car gives us instructions on how to run the car. If I follow those instructions to the utmost, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the best quality. I'm going to get the best out of it because I'm following the instructions. Well, the same thing with God. He gives us the instructions that even a baby can understand, a child can understand. God says, I meet you where you are at. If you 29, I'll meet you where you're at at 29. If you're 19, I'll meet you at 19. If you're nine or nine months, I'll meet you wherever you're at. If wherever you're at in your mindset, if you're educated, non-educated, wherever, I will speak to you and I will will minister to you and you will minister unto me. I will teach you, says God. And that's what he wants most from all of us. God wants relationship. He wants your relationship. He wants your time. And the more time that you spend, see, you can't, you cannot help but to spend time with God. Some people say, well, I don't have time. Brother, sister, you got to make time for him. And as you make time for him, you see, you begin to see that your life is beginning to be made whole. That can no instrument, no technology, no material, nothing can do it but God. Because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word today is still God. It's still God. And God can make you whole. God can make you what you ought to be. And only you know the missing pieces. I don't know your missing pieces. And guess what? You don't know my missing pieces. But there's somebody that knows the missing pieces of our life. And guess what? He can begin to put those missing pieces where they need to be. At. He can put those pieces where those missing pieces are. not And as he put them together, you begin to see that now, hey, you can walk with your head up. Now you don't have to be faking the funk. Now you don't have to be somebody that you're not because you know that you are a child of the most high. My God, how did you know that? Because you read it in the word. How did you know that? Because God told you so. How did you know that? Because you practice his word and you see that you are a child of the most high God. What God wants to do with each and every one of us, he wants to make us whole, make us whole. W-H-O-L-L-Y means that he wants to make you a want for nothing, that every area on the inside is wanting for nothing. Can't nobody do that. 
Dr. Ben Casey, no man can do that. Nobody can come close. Nobody, 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 nobody. But God, do you want to be made whole? If you want to be made whole, then trust him today. Today, I want you to begin to start trusting God. Take, take the first step and start trusting him. Believe him because you see where your life is at now. But guess what? Come time next week, you're going to see where your life is going and where you, he has taken your life, that your life has been made whole. And it's because of Jesus the Christ. God bless you and God keep you.